guess you could say we have mixed emotions about our traffic laws. And police radar is one of those subjects where you can hear the most interesting variety of wild and wonderful information that you can possibly imagine. If you're one of those people who drive around with tinfoil in your hubcaps to fool the radar, maybe you should stay with us for a few minutes. The word radar is a contraction of radio detecting and ranging. The type of radar that's used by airports and the weather office is really radar. Speed radar is actually has nothing to do with that kind and the term radar is more of a nickname. Speed radar uses a basic principle of physics that you're already familiar with, the Doppler effect. Here comes the demo. Now, when that car just passed, we heard the horn drop in pitch. Here's what happened. As the car was coming towards us, the sound waves from the horn were being compressed. The effect of that was to deliver us a high, higher frequency of sound waves than the horn actually emits. At the moment it passed and was going away from us, the sound waves were stretched out, delivering an apparently lower frequency. That's the classic demonstration of the Doppler effect. It was discovered in 1842 by Christian Johann Doppler. It would have been discovered even sooner, but Doppler had to wait for trains with whistles to be invented. And like any good scientist, Doppler confirmed his findings by hiring a train to drive back and forth, carrying a load of trumpet players. Trained musicians standing by the track were used to study the magnitude of the effect. The Doppler effect works with anything that exhibits wave motion, sound, light, and radio waves. This is what's in the unit that's pointed at the traffic. It emits very short wavelength radio waves. This particular one emits a radio frequency of about 10 billion cycles per second. These waves travel like all good radio waves at the speed of light. High frequency radio waves travel a lot like light and they're reflected in a similar fashion. At the same time the unit's transmitting, it's also receiving reflections from anything in its path. Trees, billboards, moving vehicles, and even the road. Anything that moves is reflecting the signal at a slightly different frequency because of the Doppler effect. For this radar, that difference is only about 1,000 cycles per second at city traffic speeds. That's a small difference compared to the 10 billion cycles per second that left the antenna, but it's the basis of your speeding ticket. The electronics in the antenna unit subtracts the frequency that it sends out from the incoming radio signals and passes the difference on to the sorry, computer. See. It is true that there can be a confusing array of different frequencies from the antenna unit, particularly if the police car is moving as well as the traffic. Unfortunately for speeders, the computer has a wonderful ability to make sense of this mixture of whistles. Kind of like tuning a radio, the computer tunes up and down the band looking for strong signals and converting the strongest ones to useful data. The computer can figure out which whistles are coming from the moving patrol car and which are from the other vehicles. And because vehicles moving in the same direction as the patrol car appear to be so much slower than oncoming vehicles, you can sort that out as well. This differentiation isn't as tough as it sounds. This is what the mixture of outgoing and incoming radio beams sounds like. As a patrol car starts to move, the whistle starts out low and rises with the speed of the car. The computer tracks this whistle to keep track of the patrol speed. The high-pitched whistles are oncoming traffic. And the very low whistles are traffic going in the same direction. By keeping track of the patrol speed, this unit can display the speeds of vehicles going in either direction. Now, Acme hates to dispel myths, but there are a lot of them when it comes to Doppler radar. There's nothing you can do to a car to make this unit ineffective. The only thing you can do is slow down. This unit does not take a distance and time measurement, so slowing down after you see the patrol car won't help. The unit does require a decent speed differential to work. That's why the police often drive about 10 kilometers slower than the rest of the traffic. They don't just do that to watch all of the insecure drivers slow down too. An archaic law in the books requires the police officer to check the accuracy of the radar unit with a tuning fork. This comes from the old days of analog radars. The modern radars are more accurate than the tuning forks they're supposed to calibrate them. They use two quartz clocks, one checking the other, and if they can't display valid data, they blank their displays. 
As a matter of fact, at the factory, these radars are used to calibrate the tuning forks. Using a combination of proper radar techniques and proper police procedures, a radar confirmed speeding tickets hard to beat. If you go to court and try to say that the officer dropped and nicked his tuning fork, you're only going to succeed in wasting everybody's time. Basically, when it comes to this unit, you're beat. On the other hand, given the congestion on the highways, maybe it's not such a bad idea to slow down. Bye.